Hi everyone and welcome to this quick video where um, I'm going to give you an update on another piece of interesting news that really didn't get as much attention as I would have liked to have seen because this is really massive and uh, the news is basically that Iran becomes the first country to use uh, Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, macroeconomics, balance of payments and I've been talking about some of this for uh, the last year or 18 months or so. So very quickly, why is this important? Now, I didn't ha expect for this to happen so quickly. Um, what we thought would happen was over the last 10 years, individuals buying Bitcoin, they really switched on individuals who listen to the likes of Max Kaiser, for example, and Pomp. I have Pomp's great as well. And uh, we then thought investment houses, Grayscale, Winkle, Voss Twins, I think that's how you say they say their name uh, would be begin accumulating Bitcoin as well then the big thing happened in 2020 about a month or two ago let's say September October we had MicroStrategy and square companies putting Bitcoin on their balance sheets uh, to really store their wealth Bitcoin is a store of value and I said in a video not too long ago uh, this will continue until governments countries themselves and central banks use Bitcoin as the world's reserve currency. Bitcoin will be used for balance of payments. I've made lots of tweets about this as well. I don't think everyone understood what I'm trying to say. So why is this significant? Now, I'm not going to talk about Iran as a country. I'm not here for the political aspect. But really, uh, what whatever your view is on Iran, remember, if they're using Bitcoin for trade, goods and services probably very essential goods and services uh, what is trade it's between two or more parties so there's somebody on the other side that would be willing to receive Iran's Bitcoin which they seem to be mining by the way they they switched on they smart whatever you think of them uh, so the other party would want to accept that Bitcoin in exchange for goods and services i.e. they place uh, some kind of value on it and there would be more than one I doubt Iran even for a country um, a bit of an outcast country if I'm allowed to say that uh, certainly from the Western perspective I doubt they have just one trade partner I think there's a few European countries that still trade with them I follow the automotive industry for example and I know that uh, the French car manufacturers I think it was Peugeot uh, Iran was a big market and they, they actually assemble cars there last I checked uh, that's one place you can sell your Peugeots right don't dislike the video if you're a Peugeot fan um, anyway now what that means is that these partners are happy or will be happy to receive this Bitcoin even if they don't have the same bullish long-term view they would have to recognize the current value which at the time of recording is about 13.8 um, I think we're very close to 14,000 by the way uh, it's the 31st of October 2020 and this is fantastic news now this is important as a first step to Bitcoin becoming the world's reserve currency it would be uh, quite funny if Iran was the one that kicked it off and it would be funny and perhaps a little sad if Western nations were sleeping we saw with the IMF announcement I made the other video uh, talking about their new Bretton Woods uh, they, the IMF views probably you know we see what Bitcoin can do but we won't allow Bitcoin to do it um, we, we good we'll create our own digital currency along these lines who's to say it will have even have a blockchain that's uh, the concern at the moment uh, so they'll copy Bitcoin with something that they can still be in control of. This would never be acceptable to nations like Iran. And you don't have to be a rogue nation. You could be a neutral n nation that um, you just don't want to be dependent on a certain group, a power group. Now, Xi from China made an announcement today. Uh, I'm just going to type in Z uh, central digital currency right and see if it comes up I didn't uh, manage to save that but the Chinese would never 
uh, accept that. And uh, we know that the Chinese are creating their own digital currency. They are airdropping it. I'm not really finding it. They are airdropping it into certain um, accounts. There we go. This is what I was looking for. So even, even if the IMF creates something, there's no reason to believe that China would go along with it, right? So here's this is today, 31st of October. China should take part in creating the global regulatory framework for digital currency. Um, they want to have a big say in it. A lot of other neutral nations will say, no, we don't want something that the Chinese are controlling. The only option at this point is Bitcoin. Yes, I know that a lot of Bitcoin mining is done in China, but that, that could change. So I'm not personally too concerned about that. But coming back to this and why this is very important. I don't see a lot of people talking about this. There's a few things you have to give me some credit. I talk about that I don't see being mentioned too much. The global reserve currency is critical. The role was played by gold for many thousands of years. And if you look here, what is balance of payments, right? Balance of payments is a statement of all transactions made between entities in one country and the rest of the world over a period of time, such as a quarter. And uh, down here, history of balance of payments, this is what I wanted. Prior to the 19th century, international transactions were denominated in gold providing little flexibility for countries experiencing trade def deficits. This affected your liquidity and money supply. If you didn't have the gold, you couldn't trade. You couldn't run up a deficit either. Um, I don't think the international system was as flexible. Now, this would have a big impact on countries as you would lose an opportunity cost, not procuring materials, goods and services that you need. You didn't have the gold in your reserves and treasury um, and you would miss out on economic growth or other types of investment now here's another thing that other people aren't saying some people have said that bitcoin could become uh, this medium of exchange globally it's a bit more than that if you look at what's what's going on here trade deficits um, i just spoke about investment what about fdis what if bitcoin becomes the standard currency for FDI between wealthier nations seeing opportunities in poorer nations like Africa. The FDI is done in Bitcoin. All large transactions on a global scale are done in Bitcoin. Now, what would the impact of that be to you watching this video in 2020? And you're still quite early. Uh, you're still a little bit early in this Bitcoin journey. Well, it would mean this. Gold, firstly, never really uh, reached the full potential of international currency in the 20th century thanks to Bretton Woods and the US dollar becoming dominant. Having said that though, a few calculations have been made and I can bring it up, but if Bitcoin reached the market cap of gold, the Bitcoin price would be around $350,000. There is reason to believe that if all of what I'm saying becomes true and don't believe for a minute that the, it wouldn't happen uh, without a fight, uh, there would be a, a massive fight, probably a few decades. Uh, it could be up to a few decades of them fighting it before it actually happens. But if it does happen, the Bitcoin market cap should then be larger than gold because Gold was never this commodity that was used for all of this. It was the US dollar and a basket of currencies in the 20th century. And if Bitcoin does get there, there's only 21 million. So we're talking of trillions upon trillions in international trade, FDI inflows, investments, uh, you know, all, all these large settlements in these big denominations between massive nation states and the commodity used for that being Bitcoin, potentially. The value of that Bitcoin at a gold market cap, $350,000.
But if you double it, if you say Bitcoin achieves a, put, a level of potential for macroeconomics that gold didn't really achieve in the 20th century, it would be a lot more. Three times more, you're talking about a million dollar Bitcoin. And most of it would be owned by the banks, the central banks and the governments at that stage. They'll continue fighting it, I, I think, and they'll tell you, don't worry, we're going to airdrop this uh, digital fiat currency. Digital fiat currency. We're going to airdrop a little bit, little bit into your wallet. Go and sign up and get this app. And while you're distracted, they'll be accumulating all the Bitcoin. Some of you will hang on to a little bit and it's going to be very, very valuable. And if that picture plays out, a lot of people who've been on this journey over the last 10 years will be very happy, myself included. So I hope this gives you a little bit of perspective. Um, but I, I, I'm really puzzled as to why this isn't really big in the news. I think it's because of it's Iran and Iran is some kind of pariah state. Don't don't look at the who, look at the what of this announcement. This is uh, this is really massive. Remember, it takes two to tango. There are there's somebody or there are a group of nations on the other side. If this announcement we end up saying, yeah, we're happy to trade with you. We're going to provide you with food, metals, not oil, but they're probably buying the oil uh, from Iran. But we're going to provide these goods and services for you. And yeah, you can pay us in Bitcoin, which you mind you got for almost nothing. Uh, I wish other nations were smart. So I'll end there. I don't want to make the video too long. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is big. This is massive. And I think 2021 is going to be a massive year for Bitcoin. I think there are sufficient catalysts now to break or accelerate that four-year cycle. If you don't know what the four-year cycle is, Google it. There are other YouTubers that do a better job of me uh, than me. Uh, Bob Lucas, I think he, he started the four-year cycle. But um, here's a question. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do we have enough catalysts? in 2020 the pandemic what the imf is doing nations not friendly to the west saying oh yeah we don't want your your, your new dollar digital dollar this is what we're going to do uh, and of course institutions microstrategy square saying well actually bitcoin is the best bet now to park wealth um enough catalysts to break that four-year cycle accelerate it and Maybe we see that high a little bit earlier, perhaps. Let me know what you think. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And look out for other videos coming really soon. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good day.